bench. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty. Good evening, everyone. Nice to see a good crowd out there. I, uh, first, let me apologize for my absence from uh, last uh, our earlier meeting this month. Uh, I need a motion to open up tonight's meeting for May 15, 2023. Seconded by Councilwoman Hull. Hull will second. Call a question. Hull, aye. Cardone, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Okay, first announcement, community announcements. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade in the Village uh, will be held on May 28th. Step off is from Smith's Clove Park and will go down to the uh, Monroe Cemetery, diagonally across from the captain's table. And we hope that uh, everyone uh, who can be is in attendance. Uh, it's a great way to show our respect for our veterans. Also, that's a, that's a Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Sunday, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> correct. Uh, next uh, up regarding our veterans, uh, Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse and the Veterans Service Agency Director Christian Farrell will host a free showing of the veterans movie, The Covenant, uh, at Flagship Cinemas at 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. this Wednesday, May 17th. And that's located at 34 Mill Pond Parkway. It's, uh, it, it, it's always been well received. And I think there will be quite a bit who will be in attendance this time. There's only two showings of this. Uh, our last movie we had actually three. So uh, it will be jam packed and all the veterans will will receive a popcorn soda and then the opportunity to get two slices and a drink at Amandola's or Planet Pizza. Oh, that's so, a nice touch. Yeah. That's new. Yep, yep. That's our doing. So, uh, so uh, Dory, do you want to talk about the Narcan training? I'd love to talk about the Narcan training. Um, so one of the great things about living here is that we have this really fantastic group at the high school. Um, and uh, they, uh, a bunch of high school seniors have brought back the community coalition, which is drawing attention to the needs of our young people when it comes to uh, substance abuse and when it comes to mental health. And uh, they have coordinated on their own, seeking out help from whoever they need to get it from. Uh, to do a community Narcan training. So this training is going to happen right here at Town Hall on May 22nd between the hours of 6.30 and 8 p.m. Um, and they're, they've coordinated with the police department, they've coordinated with us, um, really fantastic group of kids. Liam Gaffney never ceases to amaze me. So if anyone is interested in learning how to properly administer Narcan, in the event that they have to use it either on a loved one or just anywhere. Um, you can come here to Town Hall. Um, they'd like for you to RSVP. There's a QR code on the flyer, which you can find on the town's website. Uh, but if not, um, you can just uh, give us a call and uh, we'll send you who to uh, RSVP to. But they'd like for you to RSVP by May 18th. So again, May 22nd, between 6.30 and 8. Uh, just to clarify something, so with respect to that, it's a, it's a, a club at the high school with, which does not have insurance. Uh, I've checked with our insurance company and Tim Cunningham, our representative, has assured me that uh, our insurance will cover this uh, because of the situation. And he said, you know, it's a great program, obviously, based on the rapid growth of opioid-related issues. And then with respect, going back to the Covenant, the, uh, the veterans movie, uh, if any veterans want to reserve a spot, they can do so by contacting Christian Farrell at 845-291-2470, or he can be emailed at cfarrell, 
and that's C is in cat, F-A-R-R-E-L-L, at orangecountygov.com. Okay. Uh, next. The first time we're doing a Narcan event at this. It is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Liam Gaffney, who kind of coordinates everything with the coalition, is a great young man, and it's good to see what he's been doing with students and the community. <clears throat> Next up is the uh, Orange County Mobile DMV Unit will return to Town Hall on June 1st. That's Thursday, June 1st. They'll be here from 10 a.m. to 12. They'll be closed from 12 to 1 for lunch, and then from 1 to 3.30, they will uh, be open again. Uh, the great thing about this, as we discussed before, uh, the fact that you might show up and not have the proper paperwork, well, if you showed up in Goshen, you got to go all the way home. Here, it's a, a little bit more palatable to drive home and grab something you might have forgotten. Uh, I want to thank Orange County Clerk Kelly Eskew for her efforts in uh, implementing this, and uh, her office has been great reaching out trying to coordinate dates with us in Monroe, and we hope to do it every four to six weeks. Supervisor. That event was well attended, too. Yeah, yeah, I think there was over 42 people the first time. There's one thing I'd like to add for the residents, too. If you are um, applying for the new enhanced um, driver's license, I believe it requires a copy of your marriage certificate. If you're unable to find that um, and you got married in the town of Monroe, uh, we would have those records on file, so we could print you a transcript. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, next up, Councilman Scancarello. Uh, food Truck Festival is ready to rock. 8, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. We are completely sold out of space for trucks. Uh, we have some incredibly new, exciting trucks this time. Uh, five local bands that we have got, the Upshifters, One Night Only, Mimicking Mars, Rewind, and we'll close it out with Ladies of the 80s, who were there last year, did an unbelievable job. Uh, again, it's Saturday, June 17th, 11 to 7 p.m. Beneficiaries are the food pantries of Sacred Heart Church, First Presbyterian Church, and Monroe United Methodist Church. So come on out, make that part of your day that day. It's always a great event I personally think and this town board thinks it's one of the best food truck festivals in the Hudson Valley so come on out and join us that day as does the county of Orange good good to hear that we, we are in complete support of it Amanda Dana has done a great job getting it out to the getting it out through the tourism uh, department so okay one other announcement uh, tomorrow okay. is the school board vote so um, everyone, the school board vote and the school budget, uh, anyone who pays taxes to the Monroe Woodbury Central School District, make sure that you get to Central Valley Elementary School right on Route 32 across from Woodbury Commons. If you need to treat yourself afterwards at Woodbury Commons, so be it. But make sure that you get out and you, uh, and you vote. Thank you, Dory. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, next up. Uh, I'll make a motion to open up the continuation of the public hearing regarding local law H-V1 of 2022 to amend chapter 57 zoning concerning the regulations governing tree preservation. Bingham I'll second. second. Mary. Mary. Mary seconded it. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cole, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Good night. So moved. Any speakers? Dennis Fordham. <clears throat> I would just like to announce to the public, in addition to keeping time on the screen, um, in the event of any glitches with uh, the scoreboard, um, I will also be keeping time on my phone. Go ahead, Dennis. You gotta turn it on. Just hit that uh, microphone. Okay, thank you. The only you got to bring the mic up closer to you. There we go. 
We revised the uh, tree code, uh, preservation code, it was made available to us today, at least I saw it for the first time. I only had a chance to look at it very briefly. It's looking much better. We still see a few items that may need some further comment or revision. So we'd like the opportunity to uh, look at it further and submit our comments. Sure. And I spoke to you today and I told yes, you, we'd, you did. We'd, we'd give you 30 days to review that, that, it. That, I just and wanted then, to be assured yeah, that was the case. So, so uh, we can do that quicker than that and submit our comments and maybe uh, even talk to the planner. I think, I think 30 days is fine because based on the meeting schedule, I think it'll, yeah. uh, it'll work yeah. out. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dennis. That's all for public comment. Okay. So I will make a motion to keep open the uh, local law H-V1 of 2022 to amend Chapter 57, uh, and we'll keep that open uh, on June 21st at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. <coughs> we'll second. Any discussion? I also had some comments. Um, I guess I should send them to Max or... Um, because there was, um, you're allowed to cut 25 trees down, and then there's another section about tree harvesting. And I just had some, I wanted some clarification. So is it best to call Max or? I'd, I'd send him an email. Send him an email. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, call the question. Bingham, I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Gancarello, I. Good night. So moved. Okay, except in the minutes, uh, April 17th, 2023 20, minutes. Everybody had a chance to read? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Who will second? Any discussion, changes, alterations, corrections? Call the question. Abstain, Bingham abstain. Who will aye? Cardone aye. Skankarello abstain. Good aye. Okay, so moved. All right, next up is the acceptance of the May 1st, 2023 minutes. I, w I was not present. We'll make a motion that we accept the minutes from the board meeting for May 1st, 2023. I'll second. Any changes, alterations, corrections? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, abstain. Ancarello, aye. Good night. Just for clarification, I'm abstaining because I was not present. So, okay, uh, item six point one uh, is uh, be resolved that the town board, of the town of Monroe, approves budget amendment abstract twenty twenty three dash zero two to reflect the annual New York State chips funding, Pave New York, and EWR and POP totaling $34,368.45. Do I have a second? A second. second. I don't know. It was close. It was close. It was close. Toss a coin for that one. Give it to Mary. Give it to Mary. Call, uh, any discussion? Call a question. Bring my full aye. Cardone aye. Gancarello aye. Good aye. So moved. Item 7.1, uh, it's a budget transfer for the highway department. Uh, be it resolved, I'll make the motion that the town board of town of Monroe approves budget transfer abstract 23-14, transfer from highway contingency DB00-1990-0 to highway repair and maintenance DB uh, double zero five one one zero dash four three zero eight dash zero zero in the amount of five thousand seven hundred dollars to cover costs associated with the emergency roof repairs on the uh, mechanics garage. Moving to second. Call the question. Aye. Full aye. Cardone aye. Gancarillo aye. Good aye. So moved. Okay, next up is the order of the claims, general fund abstract. I'll make a motion to uh, be resolved that the town board of town of Monroe requests approval of abstract 23-08, general fund containing checks 
30120 through 30169, totaling $99,345.72. Do I have a second? Pull a second. Call the question. Bing, my whole aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Can I? So moved. Okay, item 9.1 is the uh, pickleball courts construction proposal from uh, for Mombasia Park. Uh, so uh, after some uh, kicking around some thoughts, uh, Pat uh, Patterson, our highway superintendent, uh, so l l let me start. So last year we ended up uh, preparing the ground, putting down item four, and uh, we wanted it to settle. It was tamped, and it has since settled, and it's ready for paving. So, uh, and Pat apologizes for not being here tonight. Uh, he, he, he then, we then went out and we sourced the paving, we sourced the uh, fencing, and the foundations uh, for the nets and the posts that support the nets uh, were obtained by Emery Morris, our parks director. The difference in the cost of construction is somewhere between eight to $10,000 if we did that one aspect of it. And the range is based on the fact we don't know how long it's gonna take for our highway crew to, to put everything together. Uh, so Sport Tech Construction, which is a company that does everything soup to nuts, uh, and they do it the way we wanted to do it, where we actually installed sauna tubes for the posts and the fencing, so you didn't have to cut the blacktop and then put everything in. Uh, the cost for this is $107,756, and this is a source well contract uh, which is on New York State bid. I had conversations with uh, council this afternoon and we are just waiting for, uh, I don't believe it was sent, uh, one piece of paperwork uh, from uh, Highway and uh, it basically outlines what the contract, uh, can you explain how, 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 how that works? Yeah, the cooperative. Yeah, so cooperative purchasing agreements are basically similar to New York State bid, but they're conglomerates, if you will, of these uh, co cooperative purchasing groups. Sourcewell is one of them. And with that, like New York State contract, come RFPs and contract documents. And that's, I do believe it was sent um, this afternoon from Danielle, but Danielle? I don't know. Yeah, so, but we haven't had a chance to look at it, but we did get some documents from Sourcewell, which I think was the contract document in the RFP. So, so then, I guess what we should do is approve this based on your... Uh, yeah, we can approve it subject to review of legal counsel. Yeah, okay. All right. So, does anybody have any questions before we get into the motion? The, I mean, I guess the good part about this is also that uh, the money is coming out of our park uh, capital account because it's a capital improvement, uh, and that account has over uh, $800,000 in it, so we're, we're pretty stable there. And the warranties and any defects or problems we have going forward, we go to one, one company. Place. So I, I think it was I think it was a great find by by Pat Patterson. He he did a lot of work on this. So, and it makes sense. I mean, it, that this is a company that specializes in doing this, um, and and not that our highway people are more than capable, but it just uh, it, it makes it makes sense to have someone in there. And, and listen, the park fund money is is there for uh, projects just like this. So this is you know. Good timing and, and uh, again, good work by Pat. And, and, and the other part of this, which I failed to mention, was we did check with three municipalities that used uh, Sport Tech, and everyone had very good to glowing reviews. So 
Uh, in fact, we got pictures from uh, Orangetown. The uh, clerk down there sent us photos. So everything everything looks uh, looks great. So nice addition to the park. Yep. Yeah, well needed too. Now we're going to need to learn how to play pickleball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> On board pickleboard <laughs> pickleball Listen, we, tournament coming up here. Our, our board has already been challenged by the Montgomery board. So. Oh no. I'll take the <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so I, I will make a motion to approve the uh, sport tech uh, construction uh, and source. Matt, can you make that motion? Don't you have to sign it? All right. I'm sorry. I have to sign it. Right, so, Dory. Thank you. Who will make a motion that there the supervisor go. signs the agreement with Sport Tech for the pickleball courts? I'll second. Uh, st stipulated by the attorney's approval. Very good, Councilwoman Bing. <laughs> it's a joint effort here. <laughs> yes, which is a real team effort okay. here. Right? Councilman Skankarello seconded. Call yes. the question. Bingham I. Cole I. Cardone I. Skankarello I. McGinn I. Okay, so moved. All right, item 9.2, the collective bargain agreement uh, with Teamsters Local 445 and dial -a bus Council? Yeah, this is really just a finalization of the actual collective bargaining agreement. The, the board has already approved the terms and the memorandum of agreement, but the memorandum of agreement is just a one or two page document that tells you what the changes are. This document you're approving the supervisor to sign is the full document that incorporates the changes from the memorandum of agreement. So you're really not agreeing to any terms, you're just agreeing to now authorize the supervisor to sign the full collective bargaining agreement reflecting all terms. Okay, so we need a motion. I'll make the motion for a resolution to authorize the town supervisor to sign the collective bargaining agreement with the Teamsters Local 445 dial -a bus unit in a final form approved by Town Legal Counsel. Second. Second. I'll second. Any questions, discussion? Call a question. Aye. Cool, aye. Cone, aye. Ankarello, aye. Good aye. Okay. Yeah, next up is, sorry, hold on one second here. Uh, resolution approving Robert Nenner for the, petition, for the position of part-time watch guard at Smith's Clove Park at an hourly rate of 1420 and an anticipated start date of May 17th, 2023. Robert is being pre-approved by the position, for this position by the Orange County Department of Human Resources. Uh, Second for discussion. All right, yeah, I'll make the motion. Go ahead. So uh, just, I, I would. Chris, you want to you, you come up, Chris? Chris Sullivan is our park chairman. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good, good. So in reviewing his application there, uh, he, it doesn't appear he, or he doesn't have a New York State uh, guard license entered on here. Maybe he has one, it's just not on the application. So we'll make that motion, but it's got to be contingent on the fact that he has to have a New York State Guards license, which means he's got to go obtain one if he doesn't already have one. All right. So. Council, do you have anything to say? Let me address that. Uh, well, I think that actually the, the, it should be subject to confirmation with Orange County personnel because the watch guard title is a civil service title, doesn't have any minimum qualifications as far as a security guard license, which is typically a private security guard requirement in New York State. So I think maybe the resolution is that you could approve the appointment subject to confirmation with Orange County personnel that a security guard certification is not required for a watch guard title because they don't include that requirement. Okay. That I know Chris has expressed an interest in them getting these certifications, so. I mean, there's no harm in having it. Um, yeah. Just like I say, I'm not sure that it's required. It would it. be more of a park policy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you wanna? Do you um, want me to um, get clarification on that yeah. tomorrow? Yeah, could you? I can get clarification yeah. on that tomorrow. All right, that's good. All right, thanks, Chris. So did you wanna amend that motion? Um, yeah, because we didn't make a motion yet. So I'll make a motion to approve the hiring uh, pending the verification of qualifications uh, to either 
possess or not possess a watch uh, a security guard license uh, for the applicant with the Orange County Civil Service. Robert Nenna is the applicant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. Call the question. Aye. Well, aye. Cardone, aye. Frank Rowe, aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. <coughs> Next up, item 9.4 is the seasonal recreation attendant at Smith's Cove Park. This resolution is approving Brendan Burnsley for the position, for the position of recreation attendant, which is seasonal, and that's at Smith's Clove Park at an hourly rate of $25 and anticipated employment period of May 16th, 2023 through August 11th, 2023. This is essentially for a yak. And Brendan was pre-approved for this position by Orange County Department of Human Resources. Uh, I, I will make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. Full aye. Cardone, and I. Anchor, all aye. And I. Okay. Next up is uh, a resolution approving Daniel McKeon for the position of seasonal laborer at an hourly rate of eighteen dollars. Anticipated employment period is May sixteenth, twenty twenty-three, through August thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. Daniel also has been pre-approved for employment by Orange County Department of Human Resources. I'll make that motion. Bingham to second. Any discussion? Call the question. Bingham aye. Full aye. Cardone aye. Ancarillo aye. And aye. And, and just so, so everyone knows, Chris, Chris and I had a discussion uh, regarding, you know, both our maintenance staffs are a little shorthanded right now. And we've, we've worked in the past together when, when they had issues where, it, you know, you get rain and for three or four days and everybody's backed up. So we've, we've uh, helped out each other and we're gonna continue to do that uh, this spring and into the summer. So just make sure they're out mowing all our lawns tomorrow. All right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, 9.6 is the probation period, which is ending for John Mulligan, who is an HE01 at the highway department. Uh, this resolution would be authorizing the end of his three month probation period for John Mulligan, heavy equipment operator one uh, at the highway department, effective May 23 of 2023. And uh, I know Pat has had great things to say about John. Uh, I was out on the job site today, he was, uh, uh, restoring one of the catch basins up in Mary's area on Laura. Uh, so uh, he's, he's, you know, he used to work at the park. Sorry, Chris, that, that's, why, that's why you're shorthanded. <laughs> 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 but John, John's a good guy, so, and he's a, he's a hard worker. So I, I will make that motion uh, to approve. I'll second. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham I, full I. Cardone I. Skankarello I. I. Okay, so moved. All right. So the week of, uh, no, I'm sorry. This is something different. Uh, discussion regarding the bid opening results for the town of Monroe, senior center roof replacement, accessibility improvements, and the accessibility improvement projects. Uh, and the award of the bid. Uh, so th these were the results. Hmm. So this includes redoing the roof, stripping the roof, uh, putting a new roof on, and it also includes redoing the uh, part of the uh, entrance towards the back of the senior center, which is a deck and it's out of whack and it's, it's all over the place. So. Uh, so that, the, the bid award, uh, you can see the four bids and Sean Arnett has checked references and we'd like to award it to Pro Solutions Home Reserva Renovations, LLC. Uh, they're out of uh, New Jersey uh, and they know that they have a deadline of July 31st to complete this. So. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve Pro Home, Pro Solutions Home Renovations, LLC, 
in the amount of $233,000. Bring them to second. Okay, also this is, uh, the, the large majority of this is a CDBG grant, which we received from the county. So, uh, thank, thanks to the hard work of Nicole Anderson in helping us uh, secure this grant. Uh, she works up at the county uh, CDBG office. She's the director. Second it, Mary? I call the question. Am I? Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Gancarello, aye. Good night. So moved. And then uh, we would need, I guess, a motion for me to sign the contracts, a resolution. Make that resolution, authorizing the uh, supervisor to sign the uh, contract to, uh, to execute, or to execute the contract for the, uh, the roofing in the senior center. Okay. Who will second? Call the question. Bring them aye. Who will aye? Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so move. All right, next up is a resolution to approve the Highway Superintendent Pat Patterson's attendance at the Highway School Conference at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York from June 4th through June 7th of 2023. Uh, as a registration fee of $125 and $134 per night hotel stay at the Canopy by Hilton. Uh, he has it in his training budget and I was I'm going to say that uh, 525 and then uh, 90. So I'm going to say we approve it for $850, which will include, include meals uh, for him to attend it. So I'm, I'll make that motion. Who will second it? Any discussion? Call the question. Aye. Who will aye? Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. And aye. Okay. Next up, so we have that storage tank that came out of Water District 12. That was yours, Mary, right? You don't want it back. Oh, we'd like some money for it. <laughs> well, here, here's what I'm gonna say. So the town of Blooming Grove wants to use it. Yeah. Uh, they, they have, a, they have a, an emergency situation in one of their water districts. And we, uh, Pat met with Rob uh, Geralman and uh, we said, well, well, we'll lease it to him for a dollar because uh, he's going to use it for I don't know how long. And the tank actually has to be relined. So, yes. you know, I don't, uh, I, I, unless it's relined, I don't, I don't think we could sell it. I mean, it would probably, probably be scrapped. Well, we could resell it to Mass Tank, the people that, you know, originally built the tank. But there's transportation and all other fees involved with that. We had a discussion. It's ironic because that tank kind of came from Blooming Grove originally. Oh, it did? So yeah. we're giving it back. <laughs> right. I'd give them anything. <laughs> what did you say? We're so not get crazy here. <laughs> Unless they have something for District 1 that will fit in our uh, <laughs> pump house, they're not getting anything for free. So what's, what's the feeling of the board? Well, I feel if Blooming Grove needs it, you know, it's horrible to be without water. And if we could help them out, as uh, Pat made the inquiry uh, with them, I think it's worth doing uh, just to make sure the residents of Blooming Grove have water. Motion. I'll make a motion that we allow the storage tank uh, to be used by the town of Blooming Grove for, a, a, was it a dollar a day? What was the amount? <laughs> <laughs> At no charge. I like yeah, that, no Mary. Charge, yeah. I like where you got a little this, Mary. That's good. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? Call the question. King of I. Well, I. Cardone, I. Skankerel, I. Good night. Okay. So moved. Next up is. School zone speeding request, which, uh, so the Monroe Wood Bay School District had reached out to us to establish a, a speed zone on Harriman Heights Road between, uh, well, not between, on each side of the uh, Little Pals, from the Little Pals Play School down past the uh, Sapphire uh, Elementary School. Uh, the 
current zone is 30 miles an hour and they would like it reduced to 20 miles an hour and the New York State DOT has to get involved along with the county. I've reached out to Eric Denanga letting him know of this situation and uh, obviously the New York State DOT is the only agency that can modify or establish speed limits along the roadway. So we need to uh, pass a resolution tonight and a TE9 application needs to be submitted to Orange County, which will forward it to New York State DOT. Uh, Eric is aware that we reached out to see, obviously, I, I would think since it's a county road, the county would be responsible for the signage and the maintenance of the signs. So. And the beacon. And the what? The beacons, the light beacons. Yes. The flash. Yep. The beacons. Yep. Is this, uh, is this just going to be during like school hours, like Pine Tree, or is this going to be? Well, a pine tree is pretty permanent. It doesn't. It, it, a pine tree, pine tree is only on school days between the hours of, I believe, 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Okay. Did not know that. Okay. And I travel that all the time. Well, I was. <laughs> okay. I only know because I got pulled over one time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just saying we should probably have the same. Uh, same uh, restrictions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I should I mean, that. so <laughs> we, we need a resolution to uh, approve reducing it from 30 to 20 and then uh, sending the request to the Orange County Department of Transportation. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Should we include in that request that it will only be qualified during the school day? It only can be. In other words, if it's a school zone, those are the hours in the law. There, you can school. Okay. Yeah. So right. it's the 7A to 6P. So you're just requesting DOT to implement the school zone. It's their decision ultimately to do it or not yes. do it. Well, we're requesting it through the county. Well, the county and the town basically sign off on yeah. their request, and then it goes to DOT for review. And in this yep. case, yours is a little unique because you've got two schools there. So the zone is beyond... What the statute provides is a 1,320 feet max, so you're going to be probably need to really consider it two zones. So I think the county and DOT need to kind of talk about how to handle that. But your right. resolution here is just to do the request and to put it into DOT. We have a second? Second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarello, aye. Good night. So move. You know what it is, Mike? I cut school so much I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, the amendment to the fee schedule. So, um, in adding the marriage officiant fee last time to the fee schedule, um, there were some fees that are currently in the clerk's office that I had noticed that are not on the fee schedule that I would just like to add. Um, these are not new fees. Again, these are current fees that are in place in the Good town evening. clerk's office. So I'm looking to include the application for the marriage license, which is $40. Certified marriage transcript is $10 a copy. Certified birth or death transcript is $10 a copy. Easy Pass tag, $25. Tariff Bay neuter certificates for Monroe residents only. Again, that does incorporate the uh, town, the village of Monroe and the village of Harriman. That's $25. Uh, town of Monroe property rental for the senior center for nonprofit organizations is $25 plus a certificate of insurance. Private residents or organizations is $50 plus a certificate of insurance. Uh, bid packets, $50. Filming permit, $100. Games of Chance Bingo license is eighteen seventy five per occasion, and Bell Jar license is twenty five dollars. Last one. Bell Jar license. That's what the American Legion. Okay. So I'm just looking for approval to include those in the fee schedule. Some, okay. some of these sound familiar, like the Easy Pass. I know we had that at one point. Um, the Easy Pass tags. In the fee schedule? Yeah, I thought so. 
I didn't yeah. see it. You didn't see it? Okay. Yeah, you need to have that because you do sell easy pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Madam Clerk, do we, do we charge for block parties? Asking for a friend, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't believe so, but I don't really have a definitive answer. Good answer, thank you. Um, as far as a permit, I believe permits are not required in the village, but they are required in the town for yard sales. Yard sales, but not block parties. Mm, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Mike's throwing a block party. Just, you know. Asking for a friend. Uh, just, okay, Better thank you. Invites. $500. I, I would expect Shh. so. Okay. Cool will second. Who made that who made the motion though? I did. Tony did. Thank you. Second. Hold the question. King of I. Cool I. Cardone I. Scancarello I. And I. So moved. Uh, thank you, girls. Have a nice evening. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Madam Clerk, can we just is it possible we could get a breakdown of fees every quarter? Sure. That w what comes into the office, in the clerk's office? Thank you. Okay. Next up, town hall summer hours. Uh, so the uh, proposed 2023 employee summer hours for town hall will mimic what they did last year as far as the hours go. Monday through Wednesday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., with a 30 minute lunch mm -hmm. and then Thursday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with a one hour lunch and on Fridays town hall will be closed. That will be effective beginning the week of June 5th, 2023 and that will run through the uh, last week in August. Last year I think we did extend it through September but if everybody wants to do that now, it, it's up to you. I'm, I'm making. Oh, why not? I, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll go through the through the end of September. Okay. So I'll make that motion, beginning June the week of June fifth, and then running through the end of September. I'll okay. second. Any discussion? Call the question. King of I. Full I. Cardone I. Scancarello I. <clears throat> Good night. Okay. All right. So. Next up is the Memorial Day Parade donations. So the commanders of the Legion Post uh, have uh, made a suggestion this year. And I don't know if they reached out to you yet, Sal. Did, did Marty Curry or Tom reach out to you? No. Okay. So what they would like to do is they would like the donations pay for the picnic for the veterans after Memorial Day Parade instead of sending each post an individual donation. Uh, I said I would discuss it with the board and we could make the decision. Listen, if we don't make the final decision tonight, it's fine. They, they, they obviously can, can wait for the money. Mm -hmm. But they thought that since all the posts participate in the uh, picnic, they thought it would be best that we just essentially pay for the picnic, pay for the expenses, the food and everything, and then leave it at that. You'd be paying the vendor direct? Is that how that works? Uh, most likely, yeah. All right. I mean, do we have a, like a ballpark or? Well, they think it's going to depend. It, it, it's one of those things you can't figure out because you don't know how many people are going to attend. You don't know what the weather's going to be like. Right, right. So we figured it was going to be somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500. What was it last year? you remember? Or was it, was it two grand last year, I think? Or? Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was about 2,100. Well, I'm, I'm not positive of that, but I, I can remember them saying about 2,100. So... Hold off a discussion. You want to table it? I mean, it's we're not meeting again. <clears throat> we're not meeting again before the parade, so we should probably, yeah, we should probably work this out now. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I, I understand probably so they're not laying out cash and then 
getting reimbursed because they're probably strapped a little bit. So that that's fine. I mean, we're paying for it anyway. It's just a matter yeah, of yeah, how we're paying. No matter for how it. it's done. Yeah. Right. Right. So, yeah, um, I would. How about not to exceed twenty five hundred? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. we will be more than fair. And, yeah. And okay. they'll and they'll agree with that. And it'll kind of keep them to a bit of a budget. You know. All right. So you made the motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, keep the expenditure for the um, the post parade uh, barbecue to twenty five hundred dollars. I'll second. All the question? Aye. Full aye. Rowan aye. Skankarello aye. And I. Okay, so moved. All right, next up is the approval for the uh, Narcan training to be held at Town Hall here on May 22nd from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And that's the MW Community Coalition who will be using the room. Make that motion. Second. second. Who will second it? All the question? Thing of mine, whole aye. Cardone aye. Skankerello aye. Can I? Okay, so moved. Next up, Pilate Village. Mr. Morganti, welcome. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Supervisor Cardone and town board members. Good to see everybody again. Um, so since we were here back on May 1st, um, I believe uh, that the town board was uh, seeking to get input from the uh, town board planner. Um, I'm presuming that the town board did get um, correspondence from the planner. Uh, and we are here tonight again to address any comments that the planner may have had or any other concerns that the town board has as we are in the process of uh, trying to schedule a public hearing with the town board and ultimately seeking to land uh, the CCR floating zone for Pilate Village. Okay. All right, Councilman. So there, there were some comments in there, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me right now. The, uh, the, uh, the, the letter from the, I can bring it up actually on my computer here, but there were some concerns about wetlands and the 100-foot the, uh, the buffer as, as it relates to uh, one of the buildings and how it, how it fit in its in its current plan and um there was a little as far as what the planning board the planning board's uh letter through their attorney to us approved the plan and it's in its uh in its conceptual design that they've reviewed for i guess almost the last 18 months however they kind of then put in a comment um that that didn't really square away with the, the wetland issue. So I think what we're looking to do is just get some clarification on that from the, from the planning board so we know, um, so, we, so we're on the same page with them. Because we don't have the authority the, to, to uh, I don't want to say override, but to, to, to wetland part of that, that encroachment. Uh, it has to come from them or ZBA or something like that. So. Um, so that's that's kind of one of the things that's kind of hanging us up with, with this at now, the moment. Now, I, I, I did, based on our discussion, I reached out to Sean Arnott, who's our engineer, and he did send me an email. Uh, actually, it was sent to council uh, and uh, Mike McGinn, and I received. So, uh, as, as a follow-up to our discussion earlier, the subject project Pilates that was reviewed by the town's planning board uh, includes a disturbance to the town's wetland buffer to the north of buildings two and three. The planning board carefully considered the grading and disturbance of the wetland buffer in this location. Based on their review, they were comfortable with the disturbance as proposed based on the following. The proposed disturbance limit to the north is located at the proposed retaining wall that will support on-site parking. The retaining wall will provide a clean edge of disturbance that will mitigate potential erosion and sediment damage during construction. Additionally, storm water after construction will be direct, redirected away from the wetland, which will mitigate potential harmful water from entering the wetland. That was number one. Number two, the retaining wall is proposed to avoid grading along existing driveways and avoid 
clearing along Harriman Heights Road. Avoiding clearing grading along the front of the property helped mitigate the potential visible and community character impacts. Please let me know if you need any further assistance. I would forward this to the board. So that's what our planning board engineer had said. I, I concur with a good amount of that. I could even add to some of that. I mean, just so the board's aware that um, it's a redevelopment project. Um, and again, as we had discussed before, we were um, desperately seeking to try to utilize um, the existing areas of development because um, there's a lot of rock outcroppings on the site. There's a lot of other environmental constraints. Um, in front of buildings two and three, there's a rather large little knoll there. Uh, that knoll predominantly consists of rock outcroppings. So like we're kind of stuck between existing buildings um, to the right, which would be the Vincent Pilati Center. Uh, we're kind of stuck with existing uh, topographic features in front of us, which is those rock outcroppings. We already have all these roads that are already carved into the site from prior use. Uh, those building pads that were there for the prior uh, buildings have already been leveled. It's, it's, the site's actually been prepared for kind of what we're proposing. Um, and in general, it would result in significantly less environmental disturbance if we reutilize those existing locations, those building pads for this proposed project. I'd much rather uh, do what we're doing here than to have hammers and dynamite um, removing that rock outcropping in front of it, which also provides a, a good amount of screening uh, for the project from the road. Um, so it adds a lot of character and screening. There's a lot of mature trees there that we're leaving. So utilizing that existing um, uh, building pad there has many, many more advantages that certainly outweigh um, the negatives associated with the, uh, the buffer disturbance. I mean, we know the encroachment's like 30 feet or less from, you know, from the building, uh, roughly. Correct, yeah. correct. So yeah. it's, not, it's, it's not significant and we kind of, but, but really is that issue is how they worded it in there. And, and we need, and, and listen, after speaking to the engineer who is on the planning board, we are, you know, not on the planning board, but you know, advises them. That it seems like that's what they wanted as opposed to the, the what you were saying, which was the, the rock outcropping and going into that, that knoll, and, and that makes a lot of sense as well. But we just have to get a little clarification from them. So, uh, because again, the, the town board doesn't, it doesn't have the authority when it comes to wetlands to do that. It's gotta come through either Planning board, ZBA, or building inspector. We don't. I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to give a little bit more background knowledge to the board. That's all. Yeah, and then, and, and then the, the, the other part that uh, he had discussed with me over the phone. If, if you read the definition in the uh, wetland code uh, under wetland buffer, it states the area surrounding a wetland that is intended to provide some degree of protection to the wetland from human activity and other encroach, encroachment associated with development. The wetland buffer shall be subject to the regulations for wetlands as defined in this chapter as it relates to the need to protect wetlands and not to protect the wetland buffer itself. The wetland buffer shall be determined to be the area generally extending 100 feet horizontally away from and parallel, paralleling the wetland boundary but can be greater or less than 100 feet where designated by the approval authority based upon site-specific conditions relating to topography, slope, soils, et cetera. So I just wanted to clarify that because that's, that's the way he described it to me over the phone. I said, I, I need an email. I don't, you know. <laughs> Here's Tony. <laughs> And the, and the other thing uh, that was was mentioned in the uh, that the that the in the uh, planning board's letter to us and then and then opined by our planner was the uh, uh, was the workforce you know makeup and where those that twenty percent would be uh, in the housing mix and how that should be kind of distributed. So that that's something that uh, again that's in the CCR that would have to kind of be addressed. Like where are you putting that? And and listen, we understand there's two main building so we know it's probably going to go in there but they're looking I, I think Micros. what he was looking for was how that's going to get distributed and what that what the 
um, like square footage would be on those apartments because those are both you know, apartment buildings. Yeah, that's an easy item for us to add to the architectural um, footprints, and we can certainly provide that. But we have every intention of either meeting it and or exceeding it. Going back to the wetlands, it did say in Max's letter that our town attorney could also give us some input. So, <laughs> <laughs> not to put you on the spot, but at some point, you know, it, would the applicant be better off going for a variance or, as the supervisor read the, uh, the town code, uh, if you could give us an interpretation, do you, do you feel that what they have presented is a viable option or do they have to go for a variance? That particular issue, it's the planning board that would, your, your board doesn't have authority on the right. wetlands, so it's the planning board and from what the supervisor read, it sounds like they've already indicated that they would approve this right, uh, as, as it's submitted. Um, there are some other issues that I think are just things that need to be included in the plan that the planning board commented on, which certainly should be updated. They're not really things that require interpretation or question, but there were certain things that they indicated should be shown on the plan. Um, but that issue, I think this town board could ultimately approve when it comes to that subject to the planning board approving that wetland buffer, you know, and, and the current site plan or the current layout of the project. If they don't approve it, then, you know, it can't go forward but you are allowed to impose conditions. And since it appears the planning board has already indicated that it would approve the current layout, then you could ultimately approve the CCR landing subject you know, to a condition that the planning board approve that layout with respect to the wetland that's at issue. And any other conditions that may arise you know, in the process as well. And I think at this point, it's just a matter of getting clarification from the planning board of what their intent was, um, kind of to, to clarify that that letter that we received. Again, we got the we got the uh, our planner's letter on Friday. By the time you know, we we look at it and try to figure these things out. And it's Mother's Day weekend and everything else. Course. You know, you know. So, yeah, so, the concern uh, was that the, the planning board's options were to, you know, recommend approval, disapproval, or approval with modification. They essentially recommended approval, but then indicated comments that, you know, it wasn't compliant with the plan. So that would suggest it should have been an approval with modifications, but it wasn't written that way. So it was almost as if they approved it. But that may be because of what the supervisor touched on, the comments that they indicated that it would be acceptable so they were just commenting that you know it wasn't in compliance with the wetlands as listed in the town code but the planning board could alter that so i agree there should be some clarification but ultimately that'll be the planning board's determination and your approval could be conditional on that at the end of the day and, and you know so we look at all these applicate you know applications and whether we accept them or not and then move them forward to the public hearing process to to land the zoning we have to look at it through the prism of other other potential ones that would be coming down the pike so that's why we're kind of we don't want to set a precedent with this and not have clarification from but we know that you've been before the planning board for the last 18 months or so and and have done great work to get that plan to where they feel is where they want it but it kind of is yeah, a conflict so. with the letter, and we're just trying to get clarification from them. And if we can do that and get that kind of squared away, then we'll be able to, you know, move forward. Understood. Thank you. I think in the meantime, you guys could work on the things that are easily addressed that the planning board commented on. Those other items one and two. There was several, I believe. Yeah, yeah I believe we have already. I think there was a, a the requirement to confirm. Uh, landscaped area versus developed area right. Um, right. that's already been added to the plan so we meet that criteria uh, building height I think uh, building height table is to be added to the plan yeah, the uh, we double table, we, we right? double check the bulk it. table reference it's an odd thing because there's actually no bulk table for this there's actually a requirement to set the buildings back 75 feet from the road and then there's the the uh, um, the building height criteria there's no front yard side yard so there's no oh, traditional cool. bulk table but there is those requirements as well as the building height. So the building height now has been added to the plan, so we comply with that. Um, I think we'll just need to hear back from the planning board regarding the wetlands, and I think we'll be 
kind of dotting our I's and crossing our T's and hopefully moving forward. Yeah, and listen, the town board ultimately, if I understand, wouldn't be adverse to the conditional approval, but then of course the risk is someone on the applicant that you go down the road and they don't approve it and you have to come back and change your plan. Uh, you know, so that's that's where the town, but we again don't control that specific approval. Questions from the town board? So I presume maybe we'll see you back at the first meeting in June. Is that reasonable? Uh, fifth. Okay. Yes. All right. Have, uh... Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time tonight. Uh, if I don't see you, I'll have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Thank you. You too. Well. Uh, we'll see you in a few weeks then. Great, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next up is the Lake Sapphire Drainage District. So you know, I know there's a few people here from Lake Sapphire. I don't know, Tom, you want to come up? Megan? Anybody want to come up and address the board or Oh, no, you're bringing Eric up with you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've received the map plan and report from MHE, which is great. It helps us get to the, to the next step. Uh, I will re turn over to council as to what the requirements are for the board. Uh, yeah, so the next step um, for an improvement district is to set the public hearing. Unlike our usual setting of the public hearing when it comes to improvement districts, we have to draft what's called an order to call for the public hearing. And that's obviously based on what's contained in the maps, plans, and reports that the town boards received. So I think you could put this on at the next meeting to set the public hearing. Uh, the notice requirements are a little different. There's a 10-day minimum. So if we set it at the next meeting, you could have the public hearing at the following meeting on the establishment of the district. Set it on June 5th for let's Yeah, say because June you need 21st. the order, which we have to draft, which takes the material out of the maps, plans, and reports and puts it into an order calling for a hearing. So it's essentially that order that sets the public hearing. And then the date, as long as it's the town clerk can get it in 10 days before the next meeting date, that's when you could have the public hearing. Okay. Now, d I'm just trying to clarify, uh, because I know 24188 was omitted. It's not included. It's included in the map. It's not included in the benefit area. So is there any other vacant lots? And Can you just come to the microphone and just state your name, please? Make sure it lights up red. In Alessandro. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there was a second list um, that was provided that was all of the current residents, so with current buildings on each lot, and then also additional lots which are currently vacant, which if um, built upon would be included. Was there vacant? They're not included? Correct. That's the way we... Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you for making a trip, Chris. Currently, the way we manage the, the dues is okay. it, it, it has to be a built-upon lot. It has to have a, a current resident. Okay. Um, but the concern was that going forward, if they were to be built, they should be included and therefore added, and that was why we added the vacant okay. lot list. Understand. And, and just for full disclosure, uh, the lot I mentioned is actually owned by my wife and myself, so I didn't want to uh, be omitted from it because I'm not involved in the Lake Sapphire community. I'm on the other side. Uh, our, our lot is on the other side. There's I no think the only other possible lot would be um, if in the future there was a, a lot which was broken into multiple pieces, those pieces would need to be included, but currently the lot does not touch Lake Sapphire and therefore was not included. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. So my question would be, if uh, Tom, my question, Tony, would speak louder because the vacant lots would be taxed accordingly going forward, yes, regardless of whether they, they wouldn't tax it like we collect dues. We collect no. dues from those that have a home on it. Right, no. 
Is, tax, you want to put vacant lots into the tax pool, no? I, listen, I mean, it's going to cost me money, but I would think so, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's only fair. Yeah, I think the general rule is you, you, you need to, because much like a sewer district or a water district, if a vacant property has access or benefits from whatever the district is doing, then they would be taxed. Maybe at a lower rate because it's vacant, but in other words, even though they don't use it, like for example, sewer, you pay for the water, you pay for the use, but if it's a district, you also pay for the benefit, even on a vacant lot, of having that, because there's value to it. I and the same thing here. I just want that. Yeah, they would be included. All right. So next step, you would prepare the order? Yeah, we can prepare the order calling for the public hearing. The board could adopt that at the next meeting. The only question is if we're talking two weeks, we need to have enough time for a 10-day publication. So I don't know what's your second fifth, meeting. The 5th and the 21st. So we're good. 16 days. Yeah, okay. Can you should be able to get in after the meeting. Okay, yeah, so we can do the order and then set the public hearing. Okay. Clarify on those dates then, the next meeting you would adopt that order, calling for the public meeting at the next, the following, so yes. let's say June. Well, you got then, June 5th is right. when we're doing that, and then the public hearing would be June 21st. I'm assuming after the 21st, I guess, Or vote to uh, yeah, close pro and, and provided adopt, everything right? yeah. that we need is right. done. The next step after the close of the public hearing is a, the order establishing the district, which is similar, long, you know, yeah. uh, I, order. I, I, I believe Sean Arnott, uh, he stated he would be here for the public hearing. So just to go over the details and uh, answer any questions anybody might have. And do you guys have any other questions? Hearing everything is positive at that point, do then the engineer do the plans for this district or are the plans already done as the... No, no, the plan is basically you got a map plan and report already done. Is there, is there another plan you're... Engineering plan itself, no. Oh, no, 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 yeah, that would be, that would be the next step for, for the... Yeah, for, for uh, the, the repair and restoration of the dam. Yeah, you need the district established first. Yeah. Before that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just looking for timing. Um, just angle the mic yeah. down, yeah, please. Yeah, angle the mic, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for timing. I'm just, we have to report back. We have a, a, a meeting with our um, association. Oh. They're going to want to know exactly, like, time frame. Is it... Is, is this thing doable by the end of the summer? Does this get going, assuming we stay on this schedule? Or I, mean, I, I think I, the establishment of the district is certainly doable yeah. by, you know, uh, even July. Even the, yeah. But um, I, don't, I can't answer the question after that as far as the, the dam or the plans. Yeah, the dam and the plans are basically up to the engineer and the, the, the community associated with it. So, All right? Oh, yeah, thank you. Eric, always nice talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> be well thanks megan thanks, thanks tommy guys. he was up here if there was any trouble yeah yeah he's <laughs> no doubt he's the bodyguard thank you thank you guys for coming down okay uh item 10.3 is the monroe volunteer ambulance corps agreement we had some corrections that had to be made uh council i'm assuming they were all made yeah i think the, the there was just numbers that had to be confirmed so uh Otherwise, the agreement was in order. Okay. As long as the town was good with the numbers in the contract, then it's ready to go forward. All right. So can we get a motion to have the, to have myself sign, the supervisor sign the uh, agreement based on uh, final review of the town attorney? I'll, good I'll night, make, everyone. Thank night. you. Good night. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, authorize the uh, supervisor to sign the uh, Monroe uh, Volunteer Ambulance Corps contract uh, in a uh, form uh, approved by the town attorney. I'll second. Any other discussion? Call the question. Aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. <clears throat> McGinn, aye. So moved. 
Okay. Next up is item 10.4, the grant writing services agreement between Millennium and the town. So we've uh, been informed by, we were previously informed by the village of Harriman and about uh, two weeks ago, we were informed by the village of Monroe that they will not be participating in the IMA regarding uh, Millennium Strategies, who does our grant writing. Uh, so the cost essentially will go from uh, 19,000, uh, was that 19,800 that we had contributed based on the other two municipalities uh, being involved in the IMA to 39,600. Uh, I just wanna make sure the town board is okay with moving forward with that. Uh, the money is available in contingency and uh, it's, uh, there, there is also the possibility we could use uh, ARPA money for it. But there are a number of grants. Mary and I were on a call uh, last week uh, regarding some of the water grants, which look pretty positive now. Uh, and I also had a conversation regarding the generators and there was two water districts that also look very positive for uh, grants. Uh, I mean, I, I will say, I, I believe that Millennium has been spectacular. Once Caleb left, there was a little lull. Totally agree with uh, the village's uh, partial assessment of that. And uh, Taryn, who is our coordinator, has stepped up and done, done a great job in, in keeping us in the loop with everything. So. Uh, I don't think there's a year we have not gotten a grant uh, and made our money back on it. So I'm going to leave it up to the board. Can I, for discussion, uh, I mean, now that there's not three municipalities in it, would that adjust the cost at all? Or, you, you know what I mean? So before when they were doing it for, or at least potentially doing it for three municipalities, is there? Uh, oh, so, so basically what happened was this was a cost for the town of Monroe. All right. And then we came up with the thought process that, hey, let's get the villages involved. It'll help them and it'll curtail our expenses on it. I mean, the first year we got the $897,500 grant for Water District 12. So we're way ahead of the game with it. And I think there's a lot more opportunity out there uh, with respect to grants. And there's a lot, a lot of other uh, so we, we have been noted by Senator uh, Gillibrand and Senator Schumer uh, with respect to two of the water districts. They're, they keyed in on us on it. So, I mean, I, I, think, it's, I think it's a positive. I know it's $18,000 more. We have to fund it, like I said, either out of contingency or, or ARPA, which we could. So it's up to the, it's up to the board. I'm just one person here, so. I think the benefits definitely outweigh the cost uh, in, the, in the short term. In the long term, you know, we could see what happens this year and then, you know, after their contract ex expires, we could review it again. But I think for right now, since we do have uh, several water districts that really would benefit, I think we should stick with Millennium for, for at least this year. And I think we'll see a continued improvement with, with the people who are helping us with the grants as they come to learn yeah, and what, what we need. And, and, and when I spoke to Dave Jenkins, who was, uh, you know, the regional director for us, uh, he said, I can focus on you guys now. That's right. Which is, which is obviously a plus, and I, I, I was very appreciative of that. So, so we shouldn't go shopping for other municipalities at this point? No. <laughs> Tuxedo no. or somebody else? Chester, want, someone else on the border? Blooming Grove, perhaps? Nobody? We want his undivided attention. <laughs> I have okay. success with them every year. So. Yeah. yeah. It's a year contract, I say. We're, we're All right, okay let's, let's see how this year goes with them, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll reevaluate it. And the Conservation Commission has their eye on some grants, so that, that we'd like to get the help of Millennium with. I mean, I'm certain, sure, the Parks Commission could also. Yeah, the Parks Commission, I think, has a couple in the queue. Okay. Uh, and there are some other ones that came out. I think uh, Game Time was one that came out with one, uh, with a, a Parks grant, and there was a, another uh, corporation that came out with uh, one recently. So 
I, what I will do is I will get a report from Dave and at the next meeting, uh, if not June, the June 21st meeting, uh, I'll, I'll discuss all the things that are in the queue. Okay. Motion? Yeah, we need a motion. Mary, you want to make that or do you want me to make it or? Make it, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion that we uh, authorize the uh, supervisor to sign the uh, Millennium Grant uh, Agreement for uh, for this year. It goes from June 1st, 2023 to May 31st, 2024. For the Down dates, uh, for those dates mentioned by the supervisor. Right. And the Bingham cost. Second. You, you second it? Yep. Okay, call the question. Bingham, I. Well, I. Cardone, I. Ancarillo, I. And I. Okay, so moved. All right, so uh, next item, I, I'd like to table to next meeting because I'm still trying to get a Liability number? Yeah, from, from our insurance company. So myself and Tim have missed each other, and I, I thought maybe he had contacted Val, but he did not. So uh, I'll make a motion to table short-term rental insurance to June 5th, 2023. I'll second. Call the question. Bingham, I. Well, I. Cardone, I. Cancarello, I. And I. So moved. Uh... Public comment? Rhonda Avla. And just once again, um, in conjunction with the time working off the monitor, I will also be doing it on my phone. Everyone, please remember to state your name and where you live. Please. Rhonda Avla. Rhonda, if you can make sure you talk. Yeah, just move the mic so you could talk into it. There okay. you go. Um, I did a FOIL request um, from the Monroe uh, Police Department um, having to do with the intersection of Rye Hill, Reynolds, and mine. Uh, just curious to know how many accidents actually occurred. Uh, so a criminal record search was conducted of motor vehicle accidents at the intersection of Rye, Ro Rye Hill Road, Mine Road, and Reynolds Road. The search dated back to January 1st, 2020. Those records show seven property damage motor vehicle accidents and six personal injury motor vehicle accidents. I know, th I've heard through the grapevine that the village is working on and trying to get something done, but if we could do it sooner than later, I don't know how fast this is happening, or are they working fast, or they're just mosing over it, but something's gotta be done, because if you can just, even with those stop signs, put some lights on those stop signs. There are two stop signs, the people going up and down Rye Hill have the right of way, but everybody wants to scoot across. And some, you know, if we don't catch it fast enough, somebody's going to end up dying at that intersection. It's, um, you know, My wife got T-boned there on yeah. December 22nd, and the car got told, and she got put yeah. up on the lawn of the house across, the, you know, from there. So, yeah, we've been all over. Uh, we'll, to get we'll, the, we'll address your yeah. concerns after. Okay. The village is supposed when you pass by, you see one accident, but you really don't know how many happen over a period of time. And in your misses. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I know so we shouldn't be talking. Yeah. If you want this for your records, I don't know. No, we, we're aware of it. Okay. No, that's fine. You can keep it for your... Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for your concern. Next speaker. Maureen Richardson. Maureen Richardson, Harriman Heights in the town of Monroe. Um, Good evening. Hi. Um, basically, my comments for tonight were just going to be focused on, I think, the ideal version of CCR for places like Rye Hill and Pilate Village as somebody who grew up here and who is a millennial living here. I think that taking a look at the codes and taking a look at the way that developers can technically use them to have mixed um, commercial and residential use and the way that we've seen them come about, it looks to us, and as much as we need senior housing and as much as we need um, workforce housing to address certain, you know, population issues and, um, like, we need certain types of housing rather than single-family housing to address those um, parts of the community. Um, to make it more rental friendly, to have millennials, to have senior citizens, to have the workforce um, and their families come. It 
just does not seem like it's fitting the design of a modern CCR. I mean, CCR has come about from literally the, the 1970s. There were complaints about cluster housing. There were complaints about the fact that the preserved land could never be permanently held. And now, with the integration of um, not-for-profits like Orange County Land Trust and Open Space Institute, we have this interesting possibility of creating, like on Rye Hill, the potential on Rye Hill, to have large swaths of undisturbed open space that suit public need of not only creating different types and densities of housing that should be suited to the character of the community, but also public parkland and a place for the community to gather, which in the town of Monroe we lack because we have sort of segregated parks, um, smaller places that large communities, large gatherings can't take place at. But we have these opportunities to mandate large, connected, usable, valuable community meeting places, valuable swaths of land. But when I take a look at Pilate, I'm seeing striated wetlands around the property rather than large swaths being preserved for public use, integrated with public pathways um, and community uses. So I think emphasizing the more modern aspects of CCR rather than the clustered industrial commercial uses is what I would like to take precedence um, when you consider letting this, the first example come through the planning board is really thinking about the environmental and community benefits over the base need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Lawrence. Hey, Tom Lawrence, Osseo Park. I'm representing. Good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, How are you, Tom? <laughs> great. I'm great. Um, I'm representing the Friends of Walton Lake tonight uh, to thank you uh, for the uh, use of the dumpster over on uh, Lakes uh, I, Road. Let me apologize. For, that was in my notes. I forgot to mention it's May 20th. It, May 20th, and if it rains, it'll be uh, Sunday, May 21st. We've been out there in the rain, and it's not fun. Uh, so thank you very much for, for, your, uh, for your backing. Um, Friends of Walton Lake has about 100 members. Uh, this will be our fifth cleanup in two years. Uh, the very first cleanup we had, we took well over 60 tires, and you, you guys had to come pick them up, out of the, 60 tires. We had a computer that was taken out of there. Uh, there's some stuff that's been identified, uh, and we're going to hold you in suspense for when, uh, when we pull it out of the lake on Saturday. Uh, if you're not doing anything between nine and three, get some work gloves, come on down, get some pickers. And uh, we've got a great dumpster over on Mr. Brown's property, so thanks so much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all for public comment. Okay. Uh, we need to go into executive session to discuss uh, personnel. And uh, litigation comments. also. And litigation also. Okay. Do we want to address the comments? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll, take the, I, yeah. um, I'll take the intersection of Rihel Road and Reynolds Road. So I live very close to that intersection. Um, and prior to being a councilwoman on the town of Monroe, I was a trustee with the village of Monroe. Um, and you're absolutely right with that information from the police department. There have been several accidents. After the most recent one, I had a conversation with uh, Trustee Barringer. Uh, Debbie Barringer also lives very close to that intersection, and she's the liaison to the Monroe Police Department. So we talked about the things that uh, the police department and the village are looking to do for that intersection, and it is being expedited. So one of the things that they will have to do is they'll have to pass a resolution to um, to add some traffic control devices to that intersection. Um, there is some cleanup that they have to do. Uh, they're talking with the traffic engineer about the placement of these traffic control devices, um, making sure that they're visible. 
um, to to everyone involved at that intersection. So, and and based on the number of times that I've driven past and through that, I've seen the mayor there, I've seen the police chief there, I've seen the sergeants there, I've seen the trustees there. Um, we at at all of us have been there at, at some point talking with with people on how to make this uh, a better intersection. So, changes are coming to it, um, and and. I'm, I'm very confident that we're going to see them sooner than later. I, I can't give you an exact time uh, because that's non-existent in government, unfortunately. But, but they, are, um, they, they are coming as soon as possible. Councilman McGinn, did you want to add to that because you had some conversations with the mayor on this? Yeah, I mean, clearly it, it needs to be remediated. It's... it's uh, uh, and the, the number of accidents that, that you cited in, in that report doesn't account for nearly half of what happens that are the near misses, which when you live there like, like we do, you see them every day. I mean, I drive up and down that road, you know, once going to work, once coming home, when I'm off on the weekend, probably several times. And you can't, I can't even tell you how many near misses that you see. Uh, and, and the majority is for me either people blowing through the stop sign on mine and coming through and hitting someone coming up or down Rye Hill or coming from the other way. That's that's the majority of them. And then, of course, you have the, the rest of them that are from people coming down Rye Hill. So, um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we've offered uh, our assistance to the village to move this along, whatever they need us to do. And uh, we're, we're hoping that they are nearing the end of their process where they are going to have a... Uh, remediation plan in place to, to stop this from occurring. Because like I said, my wife got T-bone there, car got totaled, all the airbags went off, it, it was a mess. And it could have been much worse. And and uh, I mean, last week or a week before I saw another accident, same thing, car up on the, the uh, car up on the lawn of the house, you know, right there on the corner. So um, so we'll, we'll keep, we'll keep on top of the village with it and make sure this you know, finally gets done and, and makes that intersection safe. Because you're right, someone will get killed if it doesn't get remediated soon. You're welcome. While I'm, while I'm talking, um, the CCR, just, just real quickly, um, when, when, we, when we came up with this plan, um, <clears throat> we came up with this plan, the, the passive and active use of, of, the, uh, of the land the open space that's that's reserved from it uh, was a big part of it. And uh, when we initially uh, did it, uh, the Orange County Land Trust was with us and, and walked through that, and they loved it. They loved the, just talking about Rye Hill, not about Pilate, but they loved the fact that they were going to be able to put, you know, trails, um, you know, all sorts of things in there. And then we also had an active component of it that was to include a, uh, a small natural amphitheater for performances during the summer. So we, we gave a lot, a lot, a lot of thought to that and, and, uh, and it's still included uh, should that go forward. And, uh, and Pilate, I know, is, uh, there's a, a soccer field, which is something that is, is very much needed and some other, some other planned uh, park, you know, passive and, and uh, active uh, enhancements to that property. So, so uh, yeah, we're you know we're, we're we gave that a lot of thought, and, and again, the, the the point of having uh, that much space reserved that wouldn't be built on, I think, is is one of the best parts of that uh, best parts of that plan. So, okay. Anyone else? Nope. Uh, I'll make a motion to go into executive session to discuss litigation in a personnel matter. I'll second. Call the question. Bingham, I. Cool, I. Cardone, I. Stankerel, I. And I. I'll make a motion to return to uh, from executive session into the uh, regularly scheduled town board meeting. Pool a second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Pool, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Good night. Okay. 
Uh, with respect to the smoke-free zone, uh, that resolution that was passed on June 15th, 2020, uh, two buildings were omitted, dial a bus and the highway garage. So I would like to uh, pass a resolution to, ha am I amending that resolution, Brian, or? Ready to make one? No, no. Well, yeah, we had one from June 2020. I would just make a new resolution to add or whatever, if you're adding locations, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah, I would just. So, would so I'll just make a resolution that we will add the, uh, the uh, two buildings, dial a bus and the highway garage buildings into the smoke-free zone uh, based <coughs> on the New York State Clean Air Act. Uh, that's it. I'll second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. McGinn? Okay. McGinn, can you pass that to Val, please? Brian, you have a... Yeah. As you're just... Uh, I'll propose the motion and somebody can make it. Uh, this would be a motion to authorize council to uh, file a motion for leave to appeal in the matter of uh, index number EF007419 of 2019. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All the question. Ingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarillo, aye. Good night. Any other business? At hand? Conservation Commission. Okay. Um, so the Conservation Commission meetings um, were previously held via Zoom. Uh, those meetings are now um, going to be in person. Uh, so meetings are held the third Thursday of each month at 8 p.m. at the Monroe Town Hall. Any changes to the schedule will be noticed electronically on the Town of Monroe website, Town of Monroe Constant Contact, and posted at Town Hall. Um, they requested, they requested to use the conference room, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because that doesn't conflict with planning board. Don't they do a Thursday or ZBA? No. This is the third Thursday of each month. It okay. Sh it well, if they're in the conference room, it doesn't matter. Right. So, yeah. Um, and if anyone wishes to attend, uh, please contact Dennis Fordham, the chairperson, at 862-377-4493. Again, the next Conservation, Mission, Conservation Commission meeting is this Thursday, May 18th, at Town Hall at 8 p.m. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. I'll second. Call the question. Ingham, aye. Cool, aye. Cardone, aye. Gangarello, aye. McGinn, aye. 